Okay, here I've sketched three identical, so far identical, uh, reference circles, or if you prefer at this point, phasor diagrams, that depict the current vector I of t, which has a magnitude equal to the maximum of I, so the magnitude of this is I max, and we might want to write that, the magnitude is I max, the magnitude here is I max, and over here the magnitude is again I max. Now, uh, we have, uh, assuming we have a series circuit, we have the same current through all three branches because, of course, current can't uh, accumulate well. It can kind of accumulate here, but then you uh, use displacement current, which we haven't talked a lot about, uh, and, and uh, model still works. So uh, we, we have the same current throughout the entire uh, our LRC circuit. Now, uh, the question then is, how do you represent the current through the inductor L? Now you have these relationships and you have the phase relationships that we talked about in the preceding video. So uh, how are you going to depict uh, these phase relationships? First, for the inductor. Now you should sketch the picture and put the arrow, put the vector that depicts the voltage wherever you think it ought to go. Okay, well, hopefully you've done that. I'm going to put it here. Remember, the voltage is 90 degrees ahead of the current. You can understand that by the mathematics. Uh, you can also understand that uh, just by thinking about the way the voltage develops as opposed to the rate of change of the voltage and what that does to the, uh, uh, sorry, how the current develops and the rate of change of the current and how the rate of change of the current is related to the voltage across the inductor, an intuitive approach. Um, and we'll talk about that. We haven't talked about that yet. We just did the mathematics because that's kind of quick and dirty. But it helps to have an intuitive idea. Either way, you have 90 degrees here. And of course, we have counterclockwise rotation. And I should probably indicate the counterclockwise direction of rotation. So the whole picture rotates. And the voltage across the inductor. Uh, in this case, would be this. There's your voltage function V of T, and here's your voltage vector VL of T. And I should probably make that VL of T. Uh, assuming we project everything on the horizontal axis. Okay, well, how would you draw it for the capacitor? You should uh, stop and think about that. And I'm going to pause just to uh, make a little change in the picture. You'll see why. OK, in order to label uh, the voltage of the capacitor, I had to eliminate my I of T vector down here because it's in the way. And I don't have a good way to depict it. Uh, so it's understood, but it's not there anymore. So the voltage across the capacitor uh, is going to be 90 degrees this way. It's going to lag the current. So the capacitor is going to have voltage that's 90 degrees from the current. And notice that I drew the capacitor voltage bigger than the inductor voltage. Now, these voltages are going to vary depending on the values of XL and XC. So one can be as big as you like. The other can be as small as you like. Um, OK, so uh, just at the general situation is one of these is going to be bigger than the other. And that's going to have a big effect on the way the current behaves. And then how would you draw it for the resistor? How would you draw the voltage function for the resistor? Well, again, uh, the voltage uh, across the resistor depends on how big the resistance is uh, you know, on this scale. Uh, now, we want to use uh, the same scale for voltage on all three. And that's going to be different than the scale we use for current, but we want the relative voltages to be the same. Uh, so I'm going to draw now, uh, going to offset it just slightly, but it really sits over this I of T vector. So I'm going to call this the 
vr of t. And this is a vector that rotates around, and its horizontal projection down here is the actual vr of t. Okay, that's this little vector here that you can hardly see. And I'll complete this diagram. Got the wrong chalk. Okay. Uh, by labeling it, this vector is going to be your um, VC of T vector. And it's going to project up here to your scalar VC of T function that I'm still representing by an arrow. Okay, that's going to be this vector here. It might be a little hard to see some of that labeling, but you should understand if you understand the simple harmonic motion model with reference circles and so forth, uh, this phasor circle, this phasor diagram is just a straightforward expansion of that whole idea. Okay? Now, again, uh, the relative sizes of the VL of T, the VC of T, and the VR of T vectors depend on the values of R, XL, and XC. So we could have any combination of relative magnitudes of the voltage vectors. Okay, so uh, now let's draw another circle, and let's put all three of these vectors into the same diagram. So that we have, let's put I of T in the same position. So we're going to put I of T here. I got a better parenthesis. Now, uh, you fill in your VL of T, your VC of T, and your R of T vectors and see what you get. Okay, well, I've drawn the VL of T vector about the same magnitude. It looks like I got it a little bit short. The VC of T and the VR of T. I might have gotten that one a little bit short, too, but we see all three of them on the phasor diagram at this point. Now, what's the resultant of these three vectors? Sketch that and see what you get. Okay, this is straightforward. This is bigger than this, so when you put these two that are 180 degrees apart together, you get something about like this, and then you have the resultant of that with this. So we could sketch that resultant like so. So here's our V of T, our net voltage vector, this little vector here. And we see that the uh, inductor and the capacitor interfere with each other. They have opposite effects so that they have something like a destructive interference, although that's not what this is. And then we have a small resistance here, so we don't get much, uh, we don't get a very big V of T vector here. Now that vector is going to rotate around here, and we're going to get a, a voltage that goes from here over to here and back over to here and back over to here in a way that you should understand based on your understanding of reference circle picture for simple harmonic motion, and now your understanding of these phasers.